Okay, so this is Windows 11 running from an NVMe drive on a 4 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 5. And as you can see, it's running natively, it's all installed. This is a 16 gig Raspberry Pi 5, again running from an NVMe, but this version of Windows is running in Linux. And the reason for that is that there's two different versions of Raspberry Pis. So there is a C variant Raspberry Pi and a D variant. The D is the newer one. It was a more efficient manufacturing process, but unfortunately it did break the installation of Windows. So it only works on the C variant, the older versions of Raspberry Pi 5. And that means that the Compute Module 5 also was out. The only method you could use is the BotSpot version, which is a virtual machine, which is great still, but it's not native. The Raspberry Pi 500 is also a D variant Pi, so needs to use the virtual machine method. And this is thanks to Pavlovian6017 who sent me a message and I responded but didn't see their reply until now. And I actually just looked it up on the WOR Discord and I found a link there. But Pavlovian has sent me the details, so let's check those out. So the GitHub is number one git RPI5EFI. Uh, here we go. And it's here. And releases. Yeah, RPI5. Let's download that. And this is all being done on the Raspberry Pi. So, I would imagine I can probably just write that to an SD card and use it if I'm lucky. So have I got Raspberry Pi Imager installed on here? No, let's do a search for that then. There we go and install that and you can install Raspberry Pi Imager on Windows, Mac and Linux. It's often the latest version of the Windows one. So let's install that. And Windows is pretty usable on a Raspberry Pi 5. It doesn't have Wi-Fi, doesn't have GPU support, but if you use a USB to Ethernet adapter for Wi-Fi or you can use an Android mobile phone or an iPhone, it's pretty good. So let's install this. and launch. So I've got a two gig micro SD card. I'm just putting that in my Pi now. Choose OS and we'll erase it first. Choose storage. There we go. And next. And yes. We just want a FAT32 formatted SD card and image. It does a really good job of doing that. So that's erased. So let's go to the folder Okay, so let's copy all of this and access the SD card, which is this one, and paste that in. And let's shut all this down. And now I've got to wait for the updates to finish. Oh, it is shutting down. And I can shut this virtual machine one down. And basically swap all this over so I need this drive out. So this is a Patriot 240 gig NVMe drive, very compatible with Raspberry Pi. Let's unplug all of this and use my Electra cookie case so take out this one which had BotSpot's version on it and pop this in. So important to have the USB for the Ethernet. Micro HDMI adapter. Oh, SD card. Which is in here. And let's start that up. Okay, it's recognized it. So it looks like it's booting Windows all right. So I haven't changed anything. So this is my original installation video done on a C series Raspberry Pi 5. Did that quite quick. And we're in. So I just put my password in. Okay, it's as simple as that. So if I do about, let's have a look. 
Yep, so it recognizes the 16 gig of RAM. So if I do control alt delete task manager and if we go to performance here, you can see how much RAM it's using of the 16 gig. So if I was to open the browser, let's make that a little bit smaller. Oh, something went weird. That's okay. Uh, and then if we do, oh, says we're not connected to the internet. Although you do sometimes get that. Uh, I might just need a restart. USB device not recognized. Yeah, I definitely sometimes get that. I'm just gonna try unplugging my ethernet adapter. I'm plugging it back in again. Oh, it's thinking about it, that. And we have internet, okay. That, that does happen with Windows on Pi occasionally anyway. And the other USB device might be my hub. So let's just go to YouTube and just check that that's working and we can check out our RAM usage. So three gig at the moment. This is great to be able to use this on the 16 gig Pi. And we'll just try and play a bit of a video. I'll just turn my speaker on. I'm not sure if it's gonna be using my sound card because it was coming up with that error, although it's not anymore. So let's try plugging my sound card into the USB ethernet adapter. Find the right monitor is there we like go. finding now your we have sound. match. Easy on the eyes, check, reliable. So let's skip that. Yeah, 3.5 gig, let's open some more things up. Uh, let's go with the store as well. I'm just gonna mute the sound because I don't really need that. And let's see if I drag this out of the way. Come on, let's go past four gig. Copilot. 3.7, 3.8, nearly there. Okay, so we can see it's working. What was that resolution playing at? I usually use, I usually use 720 because it seems to cope all right with 720. I think 1080 was just a bit too far. 3.9 gig. Then we've got the store. It's still managing all right. Definitely could be a lot worse. There you go, four gig. So we would have maxed out a four gig Pi and their CPU look is working at 100%. So really good to see. So what I'll do is put the link in. Uh, I may do another full tutorial, but it's interesting to see that one that was installed on the older C variant, it's because we're using a different UEFI boot. So that SD card that I was using, that's the boot partition. And that's what it's using to kind of tell Windows what the hardware is. And that's obviously worked in this instance. Oh, it's changing the backgrounds. Microsoft are definitely doing a really good job with their wallpapers and their lock screen. My gaming PC in the lounge is a Windows device and yeah, some of the images are great. Really impressed. So thanks to Pavlovian for letting me know about this. Also thanks to Matt P on the number one Git. Is this going to work with the Raspberry Pi 500? Let's shut it down and find out. It's taken a while. It's going through the normal boot process, but it looks like it's going to work. The black screen. I've still got drive activity. I'm having to use a USB adapter because obviously there's no NVMe slot in this. So this may behave differently because it's on an NVMe drive, but being through USB. Yeah, that looks like that hasn't worked. So is there gonna be another step for Raspberry Pi 500 or do you need to do a clean install? I can try it on a compute module five. So I've got a baseboard here which does have an NVMe slot on it. So let's pop that on. Because that really looks like it's failed. No, it doesn't like it. Right, so let's switch that off. And we'll swap it over for this. So I can pull it out of this caddy. Pop it in here. Not a perfect fit, but it will do. And let's just swap all of this over. Yeah, it's booting up. That's a bit more promising. 
and we're in. Ha <laughs> so the CM5 works, just not the Pi 500. And why have I not got a keyboard yet? It's also not detected internet. Try a different mouse keyboard. Okay, don't seem to have USB. Right, let's unplug that. So that's the only USB sockets I've got on this board. Of course, there's loads of different CM5 boards I could try. Let's give it another go. Oh, and now it's, oh dear. Still not lighting up my keyboard though. Okay, so nearly there on CM5. And if we go back to my Pi 5, because Windows will want to do some check-in now probably, as it went wrong. Let's switch that on. And is my keyboard back? So my keyboard's not back, but it might just be discharged. Oh, and it's launched. Oh, my keyboard's working. Okay, so it looks like it's going to be fine. Uh, so I just need to unplug that and plug it in again to try and get the Ethernet back online. Yeah, and sign in. So for me, just specifically the Pi 5 at the moment, not the CM5, not the Pi 500, uh, you wouldn't bother putting this on a 2 gig Pi 5, it's just not going to run well at all. But some of the newer 4 gig and 8 gig Pis also use that D variant chip. Okay, so hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.